Hello! Appropriating the Yorkshire accent three seconds into the video. Actually, my granddad from, was from Yorkshire. Today I'm here to do a little video about zines. Now, if you hadn't watched my last video, you might not know that my zine, Doom Rod is... <laughs> my new poetry zine, Doom Rolled in Glitter, is up for pre-order at the moment. Uh, it's two for one, and I'll explain a bit more about why it's two for one. Uh, later in the video. It's 20 poems I wrote in my 20s and it's available for a fiver so I'll leave the link in the description if you want to get hold of one of those but to get two for one you have to order by the 15th of October which is coming up. It's a uh, tick to tick 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 two hairs past a pimple it's coming. I'm going to add, do a little Q&A at the end of this video and answer some questions specifically about my zine but this video I want it to be about the zines that found their way into my life and have stayed on my shelves. At this point uh, in my life if a person's work is still on my bookshelves it means that I really like it. I very intentionally invited stuff into my life at this point because millennial London life means that you can only really possess the things you really love. It's a tiny little flat. So this is a video about my favourite zines and why uh, I love them. But first point of call, a lot of you asked me in the comments last time, what is a zine? Or as Megan Kant asked, <laughs> what the fuck is a zine? I purchased it because you told me to but I have no idea what is going on. <laughs> It's a fair question and I will answer it now. <clears throat> there is no real official definition for a zine but the broad characteristics are self-published, rougher and smaller than a traditional book, maybe made for niche audiences, easy to reproduce, not available everywhere and independent. Self-publishing and the circulation of words on paper has been around for a very long time but people cite the first kind of zines and the word zine appearing first in the 1930s among the science fiction fandoms taking the name zine from fanzine which literally is just short for fan magazine so when you think zine it's a small magazine. <laughs> They've been historically used for lots of different counterculture movements, the beat movement of the 50s, punk and riot girl culture of the 80s, lots of stuff. I'm a fan of zines and now a creator of zines but I'm by no means an expert of zines so I'm going to leave some more links if you want to read more about the history of zines. It's really interesting and I'd love to learn more about it. The things that attract me to buy a zine is that they are part of the infrastructure of a creator who I want to keep creating and I want to help them in this one-off way uh, create all the stuff that they make. I like the idea that they're not available everywhere, uh, that I'm usually buying directly from the creator and they're little pieces of art to kind of keep forever. Um, a lot of the zines that I'm going to show you aren't actually available anymore because that's the nature of zines. That, but that's also what excites me about my very small collection of zines and another thing that excites me is they don't take up very much room on my shelf. My tiny little zine collection is like here uh, but I can often just rifle through it and find something new. Um, so here's what's in my zine collection. The first ones I want to show you a bye Sam. <laughs> I met Sam because I was at this wedding. Sam was the best man. And the speech, the speech, I was, I couldn't recover. Like it was like I was chopping onions. It was so funny. I'm not even somebody who even likes to laugh. I'm not a comedy voyeur. And I just, after, after the speeches were over, I just went up to Sam and I was like, hi, I'm Lena. I would like to be your friend. <laughs> Um, was essentially how I remember it. Anyway, Sam makes these incredible um, zines. Some of them are kind of high quality colour, like this one and this one. <laughs> when I'm ordered, Sam's often chucked in like little other zines. So this one is one of my faves. It's called Misfortune Cookies. And inside is lots of pictures of misfortunate cookies. Every time you go to buy a sandwich, Adam Sandler will be behind you. <laughs> you will grow up to be just like your dad and he still won't be proud of you. <laughs> you will say, bless you in a crowded place and no one will have sneezed. You just misheard. <laughs> It's a very niche kind of humour but I just, it's some, it just, it really just tickles me. No one will ever notice a new haircut you get. <laughs> Um, so that's a taste of Sam's humour. I'd really recommend checking out the zines if you found that as funny as I did. Listicles I have pitched but were deemed too sad. Even for the internet, too sad for that. This quiz will tell you how you are part of the problem with insane accuracy. <laughs> this one weird trick will make you feel inferior to everyone who already figured it out. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Six, these colour ones will have been more complex to print. This black and white one could have just been printed on kind of like just an inkjet printer and stapled together. And then these small ones, and these small ones have been made in a really classic zine style, which is like super small, made from one A4 pieces of paper. And you kind of fold it in the right way, stick it together in a clever way. Um, and it's just one piece of paper. 
This one, I actually don't know the artist. I picked this up in a shop in Brighton. I paid quite a lot of money for it, but it was so beautiful. I think it was like 14 pounds, um, but it's just so lovely. And I loved some of the drawings in it. I find it really inspiring to flip through. It's by Deesa Orlander. It's called Help Yourself. It's got some lovely foil on the front, some staining from where I was eating while reading it. Well, that's just life, isn't it? It's a mixture of kind of, uh, graphic art like that and like kind of very simple line drawings that are really funny but also kind of a bit poignant. I wanted to be a meteorologist but my dad wouldn't let me because he said there's no money in weather. It's a really sweet little zine and it's so well produced um, that I'm really really happy to have that in my collection. You also see how all the various ways I came across these zines is quite interesting as well. It's nice that people people have a story about how they got hold of zines. It's not kind of like oh I just went to Wardstones and I bought them all. Um, no, no problem with that but I just like the idea of zine collections having like a little extra thing you can learn about the person from um this one i found i ordered it online um because i was reading a lot about copyright culture and it was just this hole i fell into for a couple of months and i really enjoyed it and i'll probably go back to but i watched this documentary that's on vimeo um about copyright law <laughs> It was actually really good. Uh, and then I, for some reason, I was poking around all these obscure forums and I found a link to this zine, uh, which is, uh, I think, a series of zines because it says right to copy issue one. Um, please won't you tear me apart. This is when I kind of really fell in love with the kind of newspaper format of zines, like this kind of very fluid, um, really nice textured matte paper. So that's the kind of paper that my zine is going to be printed on. Um, it's lots of essays about the nuances of copyright and what that means for creativity and freedom in the future and how that's shaping what people make art about now. I'll leave a link to that if that's still available um, but I kind of really just stumbled upon that in the way it felt like I was wandering down a weird cobbled street of the internet and just kind of walked into this scene. This is an example of supporting one of my favourite artists um, this is Fran Nerd. If you don't watch Fran Nerd on YouTube, what are you doing? Um, she's an incredible artist, illustrator, writer, and she made this zine, um, The Perks of a New Body, a zine about turning 30. And it's all about the, the doom of turning 30 and how she feels about it and how her body's changing, her mind's changing, and the expectations she feels that the world has on her because she's turning 30, uh, which is a perfect topic for me. This is so warm and lovely, and, um, and I love the colours that she uses in her illustrations. She's got an incredibly... Um, like unique style of drawing, which I really love. I just love everything she does and all the like stuff I consume for free on her Instagram and stuff. So I was like, I just want her to keep doing the thing. This is a zine I picked up from the Tate Modern when I visited. I went to an Extinction Rebellion event there. And this is, um, it was an exhibition that they were holding that had an interactive element to it called All Rise for the Planet. And you could take away these little booklets of a lot of the evidence that was in the exhibition. So the exhibition was lots of documents of evidence um, about how most governments have known about the kind of really horrific claims that we're now all hearing about uh, the evidence that they've known about it for years so it's kind of all scanned and then printed in this very vivid orange some of it dates back to the 900s so that's cool um national geographic magazine december 1917 this one is Wizards in Space. It's a literary magazine. I kind of threw this in because it feels like a zine to me. I met Olivia Dolphin at a creative retreat I went to and I instantly bought this from her. It's Wizards in Space literary magazine. Um, I kind of still think of it like a zine and I keep it in my zine collection, even though I suppose it is more of a collection of poetry and short stories. Um, but I love the format of it. It's really small. It's really well bound. Uh, I think it was about 20 pounds, but I really just wanted to support them and their endeavors. Uh, and I really enjoyed reading it as well. They're a collective of creatives who support uh, people's short story writing and poetry. So this is 100 Poems by Jen Campbell. Jen is one of my friends and in, when was it? 2015, she wrote 100 poems in 48 hours uh, as a challenge to raise money for the book bus, which is an amazing mobile library charity. She sold all the poems afterwards in this lovely little kind of zine collection. Uh, and I bought it and I, I, it's just incredible. Some of the poetry in here is some of my favorite poetry Jen's ever written. Uh, I don't think you can get it anymore, which makes me feel special. And it was a really beautiful concept and challenge uh, for a really good cause. That's another example of how like zines can be used and um, I really liked how Jen used it. And I think it's a little bit of, little bit of history that I'm keeping here. Gonna sell it to the British Library in a hundred years. Very exciting. Um, and then finally, um, this is a zine that my boyfriend, Craig, uh, created. It's called Light on Surface. Part of the concept that Craig wanted for the zine was that he found, finds that so much of like um, photography books and kind of owning photography is so inaccessible and expensive for people. So he made this really affordable version 
21 photographs he took over a five year period. And he was like so meticulous about the quality of it as well. It's really beautiful. Um, it's not available anymore, but I've just got a text from him. He says he still has three copies available. Uh, so he's happy to give them away to people. So go and follow him on Insta and comment on his pictures and the best comment wins. <laughs> the end. I don't know what best comment means, but I mean, you know, do what do what you will with that. He also says joke about Craig being a capitalist and exploiting his art for followers. <laughs> There you go, do with that what you will. But part of the reason, and this leads into my Q&A about my um, zine, uh, that I did my zine was because I watched Craig do it. And I was like, that looks like so much fun. And he did it really well. And it, it was just like, it's so nice to have something physical to show for something you do so abstractly and digitally uh, a lot. And I was like, I could do, I could try that. I could do that. Um, because like publishing something yourself is a little bit of an undertaking. It's cool to have somebody model that for you in front of you and you'd be like, oh, I could, I could, I really want, I've always wanted to, I could I? Um, so I have. Leading on to Doom Rolled in Glitter, Lysak Newton asks, did you write any poems with the intention in mind of putting them in the zine? Um, no, they were all written. A lot of them I wasn't sure if I was gonna show anyone or I couldn't find anywhere to put them or I didn't feel like making a video. It wasn't, it didn't fit to make a video alongside them because a lot of the ways that I share poetry uh, online is through making little videos on the channel. I'll leave a, a little playlist below if you wanna watch the ones that I've put up. A lot of them I wrote, f I wrote them for myself, but like I wrote them not really knowing what I'd want to do with them. It was more about the subject. Some of them I wrote on Instagram for different challenges. I wrote one when Notre Dame was burning. I wrote them in response to things, response to things that were happening in my life, ways to get over people in my 20s. Lots of different reasons really for writing them, but they were all kind of stuff that I'd written before I started putting together a zine. Hayley May asks, who designed the cover? It's amazing and I love it. Um, uh, an artist called Emma Hayden. She's an incredible illustrator that does a lot of stuff about mental health and queerness. And I found her because I did a call out on Instagram stories and was like, does anybody have any artists they want to recommend? Uh, and she was the ones, one of the ones that came up and I looked at her page and was like, oh my God, I love this. Then I realized that we actually have a mutual friend, Teddy, remember Teddy? Uh, and I'd briefly met her before. So I was like, oh my God, it's her, that's great. Um, so I messaged her and we chatted about the project and she was uh, like the best person to work with ever. Like, I don't think I've had a better like artist to artist um, exchange. She was, she's just been incredible. So you should follow her on Instagram. So I commissioned her to do the artwork. She did the front cover and three bits of artwork inside. Fasima Jen asks, did you do the whole thing yourself or did you work with a publisher? Um, I've done the whole thing myself. <laughs> Is that bad? I felt like it. I didn't, it's not a whole poetry collection. Um, and it felt so personal that I didn't want that many people involved in publishing it because it's so much about me and not really like this external piece of work that uh, I don't know I, it's not a whole poetry collection so it can get published I'm in love with the zine format and it fit that and I just wanted to do it myself I'm going to be packing them up in this little flat I typeset it and designed it myself obviously I um Emma did the art but that's the way I like it it's it's just me and it also means that when you buy it the money goes to Etsy <laughs> the money goes to me and to pay Emma and to Etsy and to postage and packaging and materials. Uh, but, but a lot of it does go to me and that's not always the case with traditional publishing. So that's like a nice, more direct exchange, uh, I think, especially when it comes to something so small and personal, uh, like 20 poems about my 20s. A lot of people are asking about the production process. I think I might make a video on that when I finish the production process. Uh, but what I will say about the production process is that I found somebody as close to my ethics to print as possible, which means recycled or sustainably made paper, paying the living wage, a British company that will be shipping to me from Britain. So like a lot of the zines, if you're from the UK, won't be leaving the UK and were made in the UK, which is a little bit more sustainable, hopefully. They'll be doing the printing. The thing is though, guys, the thing, the thing is, um, the interesting part of the production process I will share with you now, because I think it's interesting, especially for those of you who are interested in publishing, um, is that when you print, uh, anything, uh, the print, the print run cost per unit goes down exponentially and is quite high at the beginning. For example, it costs me, very rough numbers, it costs me a 1,000 pounds to print 300 copies of the zine. Uh, 
but to print 10,000 copies of the zine, it would cost me 2,000 pounds. Do you see? Do you see the dilemma here? My way of making sure there's less waste uh, and that I can bring the unit price down so I, so I can charge not very much for it because if you do the maths, it's two for one at the moment. Uh, if I print 300 copies for 1,000 pounds and I give away two, then the cost is six pounds, six pounds 60 for me to even print them but then only five pounds for you to buy them. Just, just know what I mean? So my aim is to make them as affordable as possible. Uh, and the way I did that was scaling up my plan. The pre-orders are open for a month before publication. And in this window between now and the 15th of October, they're two for one because I want as many copies uh, to be out in the world as possible. So two for one for the keen people makes sense. It means that they can give one to somebody else. It also drives up the print run. So it means that I can print more for less money. And more importantly, it means that I know what the demand is for the zine. I don't just go out and blindly print 10,000. It means I can get a really accurate idea of how many to print so there's less waste uh, and there's less random zines hanging around in my flat. So that's the reason that pre-ordering is cool for artists and it's also cool for publishing houses too. Like pre-ordering is a really uh, great way of doing stuff and you even find now there's ethical clothing companies that do that make clothes on pre-order, only on pre-order. So they only make as many as, as has as, as have been ordered. Does that make sense? So that's part of the, that's that's one part of the production uh, process. Perhaps when I've gone through the whole thing, I will share more, but like self-explanatory in that answer is that I haven't gone through the whole production process because I haven't sent the zine to print yet. Ah! I'm hopefully gonna be sending it to print on the 15th or 16th of October, which is why that is the deadline. Um, especially if you want to have your name printed in the zine, if you want your name printed in the zine, you have to become a Patreon before the 15th of October. So I'm waiting for that date so I can extract all the names from page. It's a whole thing. Anyway, I hope that made sense. And I'd like to be more transparent than not about the process, just because I want more people to make zines and because um, not to have like a climate meltdown on you, but like, I think it's important. How do I put this? <clears throat> I think it's important that as many of us as possible learn the means of production so that when it becomes less profitable, for mainstream publishers to make books. Other people will have the skills to be able to circulate information and art. <clears throat> Is that hopeful and lighthearted enough for you? Maybe. I, anyway, I, I think that the crossover with zines and climate change is gonna be real interesting. How long did it take? Years, Hayley, Peanut. It took years, it didn't take years. Um, the, the poems I've been writing for years, a lot of them are older ones and there's some new ones in there. Um, how long does it take to write a poem? I don't know. How long does it take to have experiences and then try and fit them into words? Uh, I don't know. A lot, a, a lot of hours. It's really hard with that kind of thing to say. Like the same with like my book. Like I was trying to estimate how many hours I've spent writing the book that I'm trying to write. And I kind of got to like, it's at least a thousand hours. At, at least a thousand, at least. Um, so with the poetry, it's less, but I've been reworking them for so long that I don't really know. Being an artist in this weird hourly rate economy is like such a weird thing to navigate. <laughs> so weird. Nine three quarters asks, what topics are you tackling? Well, they're topics that I have been thinking about in my twenties. Um, somebody else asked if I split them into sections, I have. So there's three sections. The first section is finding, the second section is losing, and the third section is doing. Um, because I think that they're the three phases of my thinking that I've gone through in my twenties. So the first one was like, finding who I am, working out all this stuff, finding the things I love, finding people that I loved, finding the things, and then uh, losing a lot of that. And like, you know, having breakups and losing your dreams and losing your idea of what the future will look like. And, and then the third section is, is not focusing so much on what you have or what you've lost, but more about what you're doing and the kind of kinetic, a lot of those poems at the end are quite kinetic because they're like rolling forward rather than reflecting because I'm at the end of my 20s. Does that make any sense? <laughs> um, so the themes that I cover, the themes that I cover are gloom, sadness, um, breakups, confusion about who you are and your identity, losing the tight-knit friendship groups of your childhood, be feeling left behind by the expectations of your friends and your life, responding to big world events in a small way, feeling scared about the future, voting, hope. Is that, a, that's, that, I think that's, I think that'll do as a summary for now. Eleanor Mackett asks, how long have you been writing poetry? Oh, a really long time. Um, I actually, fun fact, have I said, I don't think I've ever said this before. Before Just Kiss My Frog 
was a YouTube channel. It was a poetry WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> that's still up because I can't fucking remember the password to it. I kind of said whatever. But anyway, I used to write poetry on um, a blog and that's like how I, d that's the first iteration of Just Kiss My Frog in the World apart from MSN. And I used to just share them on my Facebook with my friends. And it was, it was a cool time. So I guess I've been writing poetry longer than I've been making videos and some of them are super cringy, but that's just how it rolls. Bonnie Shepherd asks, what is your favorite poem? And then also, Speedy Pizza asks, read some poetry in it. So I'm gonna combine those by reading you uh, to end my favorite poem. I think this is my favorite poem today. That's as good as we're gonna get really when they're all so personal. Um, this is a poem I wrote when um, Notre Dame was burning, uh, as I mentioned before. And I kind of genuinely wrote this on the, t <laughs> I wrote it on the toilet. Which wasn't supposed to be a funny aside or joke. It's just how it's just what happened. <laughs> but it's just this. It was. It was. It's a. It was a new. F it was a very strange feeling. I don't know if anybody else like thought that. It was such a confusion and like it's just a building. Like it's not as important as lives. But it is also incredibly sad in in the reflection of like what else is happening. And at the point where this was burning, when I wrote this, I didn't know whether Notre Dame would be saved. I thought the whole thing would burn, burn to the ground. So this is a poem about that. There are spaces in the sky where buildings used to be, holding ground for everything we pretended not to see. There's air that's made of symbols, waiting up for more. We're looking up at everything that came and went before. Something ancient snaps, the backbone of the world. A sense of standing dignity eventually stoops to curl. A reminder that we're only linked by fine thin silkish threads. It's wood and stone and daydreams that stitch us to the dead. And folding slightly closer, we squint and strain to see those spaces in the sky where buildings used to be. Um, so that's like one of the poems in it. I'll leave links where available to the creators uh, and their zines that I've mentioned in this video. I'll leave links to pre-order my zine. You have until the 15th of October to get two for one. Thank you so much for watching uh, and supporting all my work over the years. It's been really, really incredible and I can't believe that I've been doing this for 10 years. 10 years. I will see you in my next one. Frog Snog out.